In this session, we will photorealistically render a strange attractor as a work of public sculpture. This strange attractor was modeled in Grasshopper, and you can find the files for this in the discussion section. talk about how to set up this scene with the sample model. So this is the strange attractor that was modeled in Grasshopper. Um, to begin with, when you've installed Thea, you'll have a menu up top. Go to begin by going to the render menu and go to current renderer and set it to Thea for Rhino. Then under Rhino, Thea render, go to render settings. This will pull up a panel on the right for Thea. Here we can explore some of the settings. And I'm going to go to the second tab, environments. We have physical site, sky setting, and sun setting. First of all, let's turn on our sun. I'm going to type the sun command in and make sure I have the sun turned on and set the time. I've set it to about 2 p.m. and I've set the location to here in Louisiana. Now, before I change these settings, I'm going to start a rendering in the viewport. There's two ways I can do this. Now that I've set the renderer to Thea, I can click on the drop down here and I can change it from rendered mode to Thea render. Or, probably more usefully, I can use in the Thea toolbar, I have a start rendering with a play button. I'm going to hit that and it's going to render the scene in the perspective viewport. To improve this scene, maybe make it a little more abstract, I'm going to turn on uniform lighting, uniform illumination here, and hit play again. Now my scene's a little more abstract. We're doing a real-time rendering using the GPU and NCP. It's, taking, it's doing ray tracing and multiple passes, improving with each pass. Can see my image is becoming less speckled and with better sh shading. I'm going to hit stop render here to return to the Rhino render. I can also turn on sh soft shadows here and those are the initial settings that I need. Let's improve this scene by adding some materials. You can download material libraries from the Thea website on their resources page. To access these materials, I'm going to, after you've installed them, go to the Thea content browser, this folder here on the Thea toolbar. This will have a list of materials, and it also has online repositories. These are the installed materials. I'm going to go to metals and, for example, pick this titanium and drag it onto the material, onto the object. I'll close the browser and I'll play, start the rendering in the viewport. This is an interactive rendering, so I can move my scene around. Next, we're going to add a scale figure as a reference. So I'm going to stop the rendering, and I'm going to go here to import Thea model. I've downloaded some libraries, including a library of characters. 
on the Thea website, um, download the AXYZ Metropoly characters and select one of them for your scene. I'm going to import a proxy of the model. This can either be a bounding box, the original full resolution mesh, or a reduced mesh. I'm going to import a mesh reduced to 25%. Um, this will be the bounding box is computationally efficient. This reduced mesh, however, will help me easily tell where my character is facing. Now, I'm going to go back to four pane mode by double clicking on the tab and place my character here. Escape to only place one. Now, my scene is bigger than I need. I'm going to start by moving this just about to the ground plane, to uh, the origin. Then I'm going to scale it with the scale command. I'll make my scaling the origin 0, 0, 0, and my scale factor 0 0.5. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to move my character into place beside the sculpture with the gumball. You want to rotate with the gumball. And here I can see with uh, reduced mesh, I have a decent preview where my character is standing. Now, we need to adjust the ground plane. So I'll type in the ground plane command. set it actually to zero. And then I'll go back to perspective view and render the scene again. The rendering progresses, I'm starting to get a nice a nice scene of my sculpture. At this point you might want to adjust the lighting, adjust your sun, and try to get nice, really nice shadows and lighting on the scene. Um, there's another way to do renderings. This is a real-time rendering in the viewport. I can also, once I have run this rendering and it looks good, I can save it um, from the viewport mode with this save as. So save as and save this out in a format like PNG or JPEG. Another way to do a rendering, and a full quality rendering, is to go to Thea Darkroom right here with the camera icon. Before we do this, we need to check one setting. On the Thea tab, go to the camera tab, and here you'll see the resolution for the camera in Darkroom. You can hit Sync Rhino Viewport to set it to the same as your viewport. You could also set a custom setting here. If you want it to double the resolution, for example. Now, I have the choice of the interactive renderer, which we were using the viewport, or the presentation render. I also have a choice of different render engines. We've been using Presto. Before I hit play, I'm going to also go over here to channels and turn on the alpha channel. I'm going to hit play, and it's be going to begin ray tracing the scene. And there's a preview of my rendering. It's still going. As it's computing, I can check some settings. I can go here to channel and change it to the alpha channel. 
and see my background versus foreground. I can also go to display settings on the right here and adjust these settings and, for example, change the tone mapping from standard to filmic. And to finally, when my rendering's done, I can save it with the save button here. And that's our introduction to Thea Ferrino.